Hello and welcome to Basics for Gamers Presents The Basics of Combat Part 3 Actions. In our previous videos on combat, we discussed the structure of combat, how combat is divided into rounds, with initiative and surprise determining who can act and when. Now we're going to take things one step further and discuss what a player can do when it is their turn. During every round of combat, each character is provided a set number and type of actions they can take. On their turn, a player may take a single standard action, move action, and swift action. Sometimes it's best to think of these as currencies that the players can spend. At the start of each turn, they're granted one standard action, one move action, and one swift action that they can spend before the end of their turn to let them do all the fun, heroic stuff that we expect from a game of Starfinder. Like running, shooting a plasma rifle, hacking a computer, or casting a spell. These actions may also be thought of as a hierarchy, with a character's standard action being the most significant and time-consuming thing that they attempt on their turn, and as the name implies, swift actions are the least time-consuming. Players may downgrade actions if they wish to take multiple move or swift actions on their turn. For example, a player may decide to turn their standard action into a move action so that they can move twice on their turn. Or they could turn both their standard action and their move action into swift actions if they want to take three swifts on their turn. You can always convert by downgrading, but not upgrading. For example, you can't turn a swift into a move or a move into a standard action. Also, all three of a character's actions can be bundled together and spent to take a full action. When you take a full action, that is the only action you take on your turn, and taking a full action essentially costs the player their standard move and swift actions. Now let's take a closer look at the different types of turn actions, starting with standard actions. Standard actions are typically the main thing that you want to attempt during your turn. Most of the uses for standard actions, like attacking, casting a spell, using a combat maneuver, and fighting defensively, are mechanics that we will discuss in greater detail with upcoming videos about combat and spellcasting. But there are also a few uses for standard actions that we want to discuss here. First is activating an item. Unless otherwise stated in its description, using a piece of equipment costs a standard action. Most items spell out what type of action or time investment is needed in their description, or they reference an application of a skill that does, but the rule of thumb is, unless otherwise noted, it takes a standard action to use an item. Another use for standard actions is covering fire. As a standard action, you can make a ranged attack not to damage your target, but to assist an ally. To provide covering fire, you make a ranged attack roll against DC 15. If successful, you do no damage, but one ally of your choice gains a plus two circumstance bonus to their armor class against the next attack made by an enemy in your line of effect before the start of your next turn. Essentially, when you're laying down cover fire, you're pinning down your enemies to make it more difficult for them to attack one of your allies. Another use for standard actions is feint. As a standard action, you can make a bluff check to try and distract an opponent. The DC for this check is 10 plus your target's sense motive skill bonus, or 15 plus their CR, whichever of those two is higher. If successful, the target is flat-footed, but only against your next attack made before the end of your next turn. That enemy is not considered flat-footed against anyone else's attack, and note that the duration of a feint lasts until the end of your next turn. Therefore, you can feint as a standard action this turn, and then attack them as a flat-footed target with your standard action on the next turn. Another use for standard actions is harrying fire. This is similar to covering fire, but instead of trying to pin the target down so it's harder for them to attack an ally, you're distracting them so that it's easier for your teammates to attack that enemy. To do this, you make a ranged attack roll against DC 15. If successful, the next ally who attacks the target 
before the start of your next turn gains a plus two circumstance bonus to their attack roll. And the last standard action to discuss is using a special ability. Special abilities are labeled as extraordinary, spell-like, and supernatural, and you'll often see them abbreviated in the books and character blocks with parentheticals for EX, SP, and SU. As with activating an item, using any of these abilities requires a standard action unless its description says otherwise or is an ongoing effect, like, for example, having dark vision. The second most significant action taken on a player's turn is their move action. Move actions most often are used to position a character, but may also be used to perform an action that requires more attention than a swift action, but not as much as a standard action. A few examples of how a character can use their move action include moving their speed. If your character has a speed of 30 feet, they can walk 30 feet as their move action. Likewise, if the character, especially exotic aliens, have burrowing, flying, climbing, swimming, or other listed speeds, then they can move that many feet using that particular mode of movement as a single move action. For example, a creature with a listed climb speed of 30 feet can climb 30 feet as a move action, not half their speed as most people do when they make an athletics check to climb. For these characters, climbing is as natural to them as walking is to us. Crawling. As a move action, a character can move 5 feet while remaining prone. Direct or redirect an effect. Some technology and spells allow their user to redirect an effect to a different target or a different area. Unless otherwise stated in their descriptions, doing so costs a single move action. Drawing or sheathing a weapon. Drawing a weapon and preparing it to be used costs a move action. This also applies to what the rules call weapon-like items that are easily accessed. For example, drawing a sidearm from a hip holster or pulling a remote control from your belt costs a single move action. Returning such an item or weapon also costs a single move action, such as slinging a rifle back over your shoulder. Also note that drawing and sheathing includes activating the item and readying it for use. So drawing a Doshko and activating its plasma blade is all included in the same move action. And the same is true for drawing a pistol and turning off its safety. Activating the blade and flipping off the safety are considered as part of readying that weapon for use and do not require additional actions beyond the move action to draw it. And also note that if your base attack bonus is plus one or higher, then you can draw or sheath the weapon as part of moving your speed, and doing so does not require an additional action. For example, drawing a sword while you move forward to engage your enemy. Another use for move actions is the guarded step. This is moving slowly and cautiously. You only move five feet with a guarded step, but do not provoke attacks of opportunity while doing so. Manipulating an item. Moving or manipulating an item typically costs a move action. Some examples might be getting an item that is stored in your pack, picking up an object off the ground, pushing something, or opening or closing a door. Reloading, unless otherwise stated, also costs a move action. And standing up. If you are prone, it costs a move action to get back up on your feet. If you wish to keep moving after you stand, you'll need to convert your standard action into a move action to do so. Typical move actions do not require skill checks under normal circumstances, and to use other forms of movement that would call for skill checks, such as athletic and acrobatics checks to swim or jump, You'll want to see those skill descriptions for details on how each individual skill works with relations to actions. The third kind of action available on each turn is the swift action. Swift actions are more rare in Starfinder than they were in the first edition of Pathfinder. They're the least commonly used and are often overlooked by players, but do exist to allow characters to perform actions that are less demanding than a standard or move action. Two common examples include changing your grip, 
such as moving from holding a weapon with both hands to wielding it with only one, and dropping prone. If a standing character wishes to adopt a prone posture, it only costs them a swift action to fall prone. While prone, a character suffers a negative 4 penalty to attack with melee weapons and a negative 4 penalty to their armor class against melee attacks, but gain a plus 4 bonus to their armor class against ranged attacks. In this video, we discussed combat actions. At the start of each turn, players receive one standard, move, and swift action that can be spent to declare activities during their turn. Standard actions may be spent to perform move or swift actions, and move actions may be spent to take an additional swift action. Standard actions are typically spent to perform the most prominent activity during a turn. For example, attacking and casting a spell are both standard actions, which will be detailed in future videos. But other uses for standard actions include activating an item, or laying down cover fire. Covering fire is a ranged attack roll versus DC 15, which grants a plus 2 circumstance bonus to one ally's armor class if successful. Feints allow you to impose the flat-footed condition on an enemy by making a bluff check versus 10 plus their sense motive bonus or 15 plus their CR. Herring fire allows you to grant a plus 2 bonus to an ally's next attack by distracting your target with a ranged attack roll versus 15. And using a special ability costs a standard action unless it is an ongoing ability or is otherwise noted. Move actions are most often spent to reposition the character. A move action can be spent to move up to your speed. You can crawl 5 feet as a move action. You can direct or redirect an effect as a move action. Drawing and sheathing weapons is a move action, and if your base attack bonus is plus 1 or higher, you can draw or sheath a weapon as part of moving your speed. A guarded step is a move action that lets you move only 5 feet, but you do not provoke attacks of opportunity while doing so. You can manipulate an item like opening a door or picking something up as a move action. Reloading a weapon is a move action. And standing up is a move action. Swift actions are mostly incidental actions that require less attention than standard or move actions. Two common swift actions are changing your grip on your weapon and falling into a prone position. While prone, you gain a plus 4 bonus to armor class against ranged attacks, but suffer negative 4 penalties to both making and receiving melee attacks. With that, we'll bring this video to a close. If you found this video helpful, please give us a like, and don't forget to click that subscribe button and bell so you don't miss out on our future videos. Leave us a comment letting us know what topics you would like to see us cover in the future, and we can always be reached through our Twitter and Facebook pages too. If you would like to use some of the maps that we feature in our videos with your own games, you can find them at Maps of Mastery and Zero Hour. Links to those sites may be found in the description. Thanks for watching, take care, and we'll see you soon with more basics for your favorite tabletop games.